Hey guys, in this brief tutorial, you'll understand and learn how to implement RAG on Google Cloud in order to enhance text generation with the information retrieved from an external knowledge base. And you'll also be able to explore more about how the process of RAG combines the retrieved information with advanced text generation. To begin with, let's take an example to set the context. Imagine you've deployed a chatbot for your e-commerce website or application which uses an LLM like ChatGPT's OpenAI or Google's Palm as a foundational model and responds to user queries about generic fashion-related topics and trends. Now, keep in mind, LLMs can be extremely inconsistent, be it OpenAI, be it Palm or be it Llama, meaning occasionally LLMs can seem like they have no clue what they're saying. It's because they don't. This is called hallucination, which can lead to misleading information. Now, in order to improve your LLM's response, you must ground this model to external sources of knowledge to ensure that this LLM sticks to the knowledge provided in this external source. This external source of data could be a vector database, which stores vast volumes of textual data in vector form, also known as embeddings. It could be a bunch of unstructured files such as PDFs and doc files, or it could even be the information sitting on a website or an API. So by grounding your model to a data source, you're ensuring that the model has access to reliable facts rather than random misleading information. There's another advantage of doing this, which is that you don't really need to continuously train the model on new data. You can just keep on adding more data to the data source as and when need be. And this process of grounding your LLM to a credible source of data is called RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. It has several benefits. Firstly, by integrating information retrieval into the response generation process, RAC can produce answers that's not only contextually relevant, but also factually accurate. It makes your model incredibly efficient for tasks that require up-to-date or custom knowledge, let's say on products or information relevant to your organization or specific products. It leads to reduction in bias and errors because your model can pull in real-time information from a diverse set of sources that's factual and relevant. By implementing RAG, you're enabling your model to handle complex tasks that require an understanding on specific business domains and products such as, let's say, banking products, specific e-commerce products that's only relevant to your organization, legal research, or even tech support. And finally, RAG is a step towards building models that not only understand language, but also interact intelligently with the information. So that was retrieval augmented generation in a nutshell. Now, coming to the lab activities that you'll be performing on Google Cloud, we'll start by extracting text, which is unstructured data from a doc file, and create embeddings out of this data using text embeddings gecko. We'll then create a vector store using a pandas data frame, which will contain the embeddings of the text from the doc file. Finally, we'll build a Q&A system using Google's Palm model, and this model will be grounded to this vector store, which will be the external source of data. Now, I'll be using Palm in this demo, but you can also use ChatGPT's OpenAI as a foundation model. That doesn't really matter. Now, to perform this lab, you need a Google Cloud account with billing enabled. A trial account should be more than enough. You will need to have the Vertex AI API enabled in your project. And last but not least, you should understand Python. Now, the coding part of this lab isn't too complicated. It's just a few lines of code. So let's begin. All right, so before we get started with the coding bit, let's understand the flow of data. So we'll be dealing with a doc file, which contains information of fictional products from an e-commerce website. Now, this is what the doc file looks like. You can see it has roughly 35 fictional products, which I've generated using ChatGPT. And each line in this doc file contains a product name, the price of the product, the product description, and if this product is available in stock or not. Now using this doc file, we'll be creating a vector store, meaning we'll create embeddings out of the data inside this doc file and storing them in a pandas data frame. Now this pandas data frame will act as an external knowledge base or a database for this LLM. So think of this, let's say a user is asking specific questions about the availability of certain products in your inventory in which case the llm will do a quick lookup in this vector store or pandas data frame and if it finds relevant information pertaining to the user query then it will respond accordingly 
and in case the LLM does not find any relevant information uh, about the user query, then it will say uh, that it does not have any idea or any information or knowledge about what the user is asking, something on those lines. So that's the flow of data. All right, coming to the execution now, I'm on my Vertex AI dashboard on my GCP account. And I've created a simple workbench. You can do the same. Just click on create new. Scroll down and click on advanced options. Give your instance a name and come into the environment. Uh, we'll be selecting Debian 11, which is fine. And from the environment drop down, just select Python 3 because you don't really need TensorFlow installed. Now come into the machine type, select E2 because that's the cheapest machine available. And in the machine drop down, select E2 standard 2, which should be more than enough for you to perform uh, whatever we're performing in this lab. And once you're done with the configuration, just click on create. So once your workbench is created, click on open Jupyter Lab, which will open a Jupyter Lab in a new tab on your browser. And this is the IPython notebook, which contains the, the code in order to implement RAG. It's called RAG Embeddings. And I've also uploaded the doc file here, which is ecommerceproducts.docx. So to begin with, we need to install the necessary libraries. The first one is Google Cloud AI Platform version 1.36.1. And the second one is Python docx because we're dealing with a doc file here, right? So uncomment both these lines one at a time and do a pip install. And once both your executions are done or the installations are done, just go to kernel and click on restart kernel. Now let's start with the code block. The first code block is pretty much boilerplate. Uh, we import the necessary libraries that's needed. This is my project ID. This is the location, which is US Central 1. We initialize Vertex AI. And the last two lines are quite important. First, we initialize an embedding model using text embedding gecko. Now, text embedding gecko is a foundational model, which is part of uh, Palm 2 of GCP. You can read more about text embeddings here. It's a model which is used to create embeddings out of your data, structured or unstructured both. Next, we initialize a text generation model, and we call it generation underscore model. For this, we're using text bison, which is also part of uh, Palm 2 of GCP. But for text generation, you can also feel free to use OpenAI. Doesn't really matter. So let's run this code block. All right. Next, what we're doing is asking a simple question to ILLM, which is Palm 2 in this case. And let's see, without any grounding or external knowledge base, what does this LLM come up with? So I'm asking what products do you have for kids? Describe all the products in detail. Now keep in mind, we have not connected a vector store or external database to the model yet. So let's ask this question and see the response. So you can see it says we have a variety of products for kids, including toys, games, books, and clothes. Now, this answer does not really make a lot of sense because it does not even know what products we're talking about, but it still responds with something. And this is what you call hallucinating because we have not provided any context at all to our LLM model. So now let's move on. So from this code block onwards, whatever we'll be implementing or executing will be pertaining to grounding and drag. The first step is to write a function that will extract text from the doc file. This is the name of our doc file, which is ecommerce products.docx, which is right here. And we pass it to this function, which is defined above, and we extract the data. Let's run this code block. Now the data inside this doc file will be stored inside the variable filter and underscore text. So if you want to see what this looks like, it's nothing but a simple Python list where each element of this list is one line in the doc file. All right. You can also do a for loop. Uh, to go through the, the the elements in the list, which is your filter text. So if I uncomment this and run this, you can see this is nothing but the contents of your doc file. Next, we have a bunch of uh, functions that we'll be making use of, starting with create text chunks. Now, chunking, as the name suggests, is splitting your data 
into smaller subsets or chunks all right now this is particularly important and it matters a lot if you're dealing with vast volumes of data in unstructured format for this specific use case it doesn't really matter because our doc file is quite small and it only has uh, roughly 50 lines of uh, content in it next we have calculate similarity which will be used uh, in order to accept the user input and compare this user input with the vector store now both these comparisons will be in the vector form so the user input will be converted to a vector form and then compared to the vector or the embeddings which will be in the pandas data frame so that's the idea behind calculating the similarity between two vectors or two embeddings for that we're using a dot product as you can see np dot dot and it returns the metric which is the most similar next we have retrieve embeddings where we're actually passing the text or the chunk to this function which is called get embeddings and it returns the vector form of the text that is passed inside now we're using a decorator retry decorator uh, now this is specifically used to make sure that your code uh, doesn't encounter failures or doesn't encounter API limits or quota limits in case of a failure this is going to time out and retry after 300 seconds or 5 minutes so that's the idea behind using a retry decorator for retrieve embeddings next we have a build vector store function which accepts the arguments in the input text the chunk size and the overlap size now this pandas data frame will have two columns text chunks which is the actual text from your doc file and then the respective embeddings for that specific chunk and it returns the pandas data frame next we have derived context which will derive the context from your embeddings which is your user query it accepts the question the vector store which is nothing but the pandas data frame and the top docs now the top docs is nothing but the number of chunks inside of which uh, the user query should be looked up all right and we'll see how this works when we get to the execution and finally we have generate answer uh, which uh, makes a call to derive context once it gets the context it then passes that to this prompt now in this prompt i'm saying your mission is to answer questions based on the given context before you give an answer make sure it's only from the information inside the context and if the information is not inside the context just reply i don't know the answer to that so that's the instructions that i'm setting the context will be coming from this function derived context and the question is what we will be importing so that's pretty much all the functions that we need so we can uh, execute this code block now next comes the chunk size and the overlap size now the chunk size is something i've already explained it is basically splitting your data in smaller into smaller subsets so that the model can deal with one chunk at a time next is the overlap size now the overlap size is the data that can overlap across different chunks meaning the data that can be repeated across different chunks since we're dealing with a very small amount of data which is inside the doc file i've set the overlap size to zero and then we invoke the build vector store function which is right here so let's run this code block you can see the vector store is being set up now all right so our vector store is created it would have taken some time roughly five minutes and that's understandable because of the limitations that you have in your api calls so make sure to not execute this code block too frequently as you might encounter uh, quota limitation errors especially with uh, the embedding model so now that our vector store is created and as we know it's nothing but a pandas data frame we can do a simple uh, data frame dot head in order to see the content so you can see this is the text chunk and these are the embeddings for that text chunk all right okay so we're done with uh, the most difficult part which is grounding 
or the, the prerequisites in order to ground your LLM to an external uh, knowledge base. So now we can type a query. We can ask the same question. What products do you have for kids? Tell me about each of them, including the price. But now we're not just calling the model. We are passing the vector store as a context to the function generate answer. So we pass the user query and then we pass the pandas data frame, which is the text vector store. And now let's see what the LLM responds with. All right. So it says we have the following products for kids. Galaxy night lamp for kids priced at $30, so on and so forth. And you will see this content is coming from the doc file. So if you just look at Galaxy night lamp, let's say I'm doing a quick search in my doc file. You see, there it is. And this is where the LLM is taking the information from. You can also experiment. So the next question that I'm asking is, do you have coffee beans? Tell me more about the product. So let's see what it says. It says the gourmet coffee beans are premium quality, freshly roasted coffee beans, so on and so forth. Now let's see if this product actually exists. All right, there you go. So we have this product. So that was RAG. Uh, and I would suggest playing around with more unstructured data. You can just make use of ChatGPT to create uh, uh, doc files or to create content and you can create doc files out of them and see how to implement RAG in different ways. Also play around with the prompts, play around with the, the temperature here. I've set the temperature to 0.7 and the max output token to 1024. Uh, these are all uh, tweakable, tweakable parameters. So feel free to experiment with them. Thank you.